There are certain species of animals in the world today that are more endangered than others. The plight of the tiger, for instance, is well known. There's another endangered animal that's found only in the country of Madagascar. It's the lemur, and it too is facing elimination. Fortunately, there's a conservation foundation in Florida that's dedicated to preserving the future of this fascinating animal. It might not look like it, but a lemur is a primate. For millions of years, they have existed only on the island of Madagascar. And because of their isolation, they are less evolved than other primates. Unfortunately, their numbers are dwindling in Madagascar due to a loss of habitat and hunting. Many species have already been eliminated. Thankfully, the Lemur Conservation Foundation is providing a home for many endangered species. Located in South Central Florida, this foundation has an 11-acre forest where these lemurs can live quite naturally. The hope is that one day they will be able to return to their homeland. Here, we're trying to breed them, and one of our eventual goals is to release them back in Madagascar. Right now, the country is sort of stable, but not entirely stable. Within this forest, there are four species of lemurs. This lemur is a ringtail. They're largely terrestrial, which means they're mostly, they mostly spend a huge amount of their time on the ground. As I say this, you know, he's munching on pine needles in the trees, but you'll see them on the ground a lot more than any other lemur in Madagascar. To help supplement their diet, the lemurs are provided monkey chow. The brown lemurs you see are called mongoose lemurs. Lemurs don't have lips that close like ours, so as they eat, they tend to lift their chin up to keep the food from falling out of their mouth. You can see the sharp teeth when they're eating. This is their main weapon for self-defense. In their natural behaviors, they do what's called slashing. So they'll jump at each other and they'll slash each other with their canines. So despite their really adorable appearance, they can be formidable fighters. The ring-tailed lemurs are especially fascinating to watch whether they are eating or huddling together for a grooming session. When they groom each other, this is how they maintain their social ties. Also, lemurs are neat in that they have a tooth comb. Their teeth in the front are perpendicular to their mouth, creating a comb that they actually drag through their fur. And when the sun comes out, it's common to see them facing the sun. And, well, I'm not sure just what they're doing. This is jokingly called sun worshiping by scientists who study these lemurs. What they're doing is they're exposing their belly and the inside of their legs and holding their palms up to the sun. This warms them up, but of course it looks like they're worshiping the sun. After observing the ringtails, the mongoose and the red-fronted brown lemurs, we move to another part of the forest to find another species that prefers not to socialize with the others. These little guys are called bamboo lemurs. The bamboo lemurs don't hang out with our other species um, by choice, and they find so much to eat out here that they don't need to go and compete with the other lemurs for fruit, vegetables, monkey chow. It could also be because they're the smallest and would be easily displaced by the other larger lemurs. One of the bamboo lemurs has earned a nickname from many of the assistants who work here. The one with the gold tag, his real name is Bewhiskered, but we nickname him Cartman after the South Park character because he tends to get chubby and he's got kind of a nasty, crappy attitude, and pretty much everyone who's worked here has gotten smacked by him at least once. It is clear during our visit that the Lemur Conservation Foundation is quite serious about preserving as many species of lemurs as possible, and with the hope of one day returning them to Madagascar. The people and the president of Madagascar are trying really hard to create new reserves and protect more land and more of the lemurs. If this trend continues, then there will be spaces where we can release new lemurs into that environment and have a high probability of their surviving. Now that wouldn't be the lemurs here at this reserve. 
because they wouldn't be able to adapt to that wild. But their offspring, or the offspring of their offspring, so our lemurs' grandchildren, might in fact be released into the wild and succeed there.